Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and this is the electrical question of the day. When making terminal connections, how should the tightening torque values be determined and achieved? The options were by using a torque wrench set to a standard value, by guessing based off the actual size of the terminal, by using the highest torque value found in the NEC book, or by referring to the torque values indicated on the equipment or instructions? And the correct answer is D. Let's look at the paraphrase code language. It says tightening torque values for terminal connections must be indicated on the equipment or in the manufacturer's installation instructions. An approved means should be used to achieve this indi indicated torque value. And of course, if you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, we're talking about how much do we tighten the electrical connections that we're making up, whether it's in a panel or switches or receptacles? Do we use the, the three squeak method? Do we use the, you know, the, the grunt and twist method? Or is there an actual value that we're supposed to be tightening all these connections? And does it really matter? Well, this became a specific code in the 2017 NEC. And it then specifically said, hey, you have to tighten things according to the manufacturer's instructions and specifications. But we could argue that in the 2014 and previous, this code was already into play based off of 110.3b that wants us to install everything according to the listing and labeling instructions. So this has kind of always been code, but 17 and later, it is now a specific code. And we got clarification and more context in the 2020 and 2023. But one thing that I want to get across to us today is that we need to understand the importance of torquing and make sure that we're torquing all of our connections. Now let's talk about a couple of the connections that we need to make sure that we're torquing. Let's imagine that we're installing this electrical panel and it's previous to the 2017 code or the 2017 adoption or later. In a lot of states, a lot of electricians, we what we would do is just torque the main connections, all of our big lugs, right? They would all get torqued. That's all the inspectors were requiring. Depending on your jurisdiction, they may have not have been requiring it at all. But did you know that not only are we supposed to be torquing these large connections, but 2017 and later, clearly it states that we have to be torquing even the breakers, the neutral bars, the ground bars, and also all of our switches and receptacles. Anything that has a torque value needs to be torqued, and we need to make sure that we're doing it properly. So where do we find these values at? Let's take a look. You can find them oftentimes on the can, the panel cover, or the back of the panel box itself. So we're talking about the cover or the box that it's in. Remember the guts are what the panel are, but we call it often the whole assembly, an electrical panel, but we're, the guts are technically the panel. But on the back of that can that is holding the panel guts or on the cover itself or on the door, you'll often find a markup just like this. And you just got to take your time and read it. Here it says A and B, and it clearly says main lugs. If you're using the main lug version, you can use 6 through 300 kc mil wire, and you have to torque it up to 375 inch pounds. Then when we go here, it says A, B, if you have a main breaker, which in this case we do, we would go, you're allowed to install 3 gauge up to 300 kc mil and it has to be 250 inch pounds. Then it says here for our neutral, it'll, it will receive in between six gauge and 300 kc mil. We have 375 pounds again. And then our ground, it's talking about the main ground here. It is, you can do a two aught to a number four wire and it must be 50 pounds. Then when we get here, we get to neutral and equipment ground bars, says here in parentheses, the small holes, you can do six through four gauge, they must be 35 pounds. You can do eight gauge and it must be 25 pounds, or you're allowed to do 14 through 10 and it must be 20 pounds. And if it's not listed on the can or on the device itself, whether it's breaker or whatever, and often the breakers have it right on there, you will find it in the paperwork that came with the panel box or with the box of switches or the box of receptacles. 
Sometimes you have to go dig to the manufacturer specifications online and you'll find that a lot of brands are very similar for the same product. Like if it's two sets of switches or two sets of receptacles, but always make sure that you know your source torque spec. Now let's talk about how to achieve this. Well, for all of our larger lugs, we're going to use something like this, which is a torque wrench. This is going to be a wrench style. You're going to have your three eighths or your half inch or larger, and you're going to snap on your sockets, your Allen sockets, and you're going to torque it down. But did you know that you can also get torque screwdrivers and they are your best friend as an electrician nowadays. You get in there, you set it to 12, 15, 20, whatever it is, and boom, 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 boom. You can go through, torque them all down and make sure that you've got a rock solid connection. I am the Electrical Code Coach and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. Let's go ahead and get to it.